Are you looking for entertainment for a fundraiser, outreach, youth night, date night, or for a conference? Does your team need a way to improve team camaraderie, confidence, and communication? Well, look at Wellverse Comedy for a show, performance, or a workshop. Wellverse Comedy is Chicago's clean comedy team, and we're ready to serve you, your audience, or your organization. We've headlined our own shows at the Second City at Gutty's Comedy Club in Indianapolis and started our own TV show called His Line. And we've raised over $5,000 for charity in just the last two years. We are now booking for your back-to-school bash, fundraiser, and even your holiday parties. Contact us today, and let's see how a night of high-energy, clean, original, family-friendly comedy can make your next event memorable for all the right reasons. Connect with us on social media at WellversedCMDY. That's at WellversedCMDY. Or online at WellversedComedy.com. WellversedComedy.com. For booking information, email us improv at WellversedComedy.com. Welcome to the Gifts for Glory podcast, where we celebrate and promote men and women using their gifts for God's glory. Know someone who is making an impact for God's kingdom using their gifts, talents, and passions? We'd love to meet them. Send us an email at podcast at giftsforglory.com. That's podcast at gifts, the number four, glory.com. And now here is our host, Dave Ebert. Hello, friends and neighbors, and welcome to the uh, latest edition of Gifts for Glory. The only Saturday that you're joining us, whether you're listening or watching live on Facebook or YouTube, or you're catching us on Rumble.com, the Creative Motion Network, or the Taken TV Network podcast channel. Uh, we're really excited to share this episode with you. We have a special guest. Uh, we're going to switch things order, uh, switch the order up to, uh, tonight. Uh, we're going to bring on our guest first, then we'll get to our Devotions with Dave segment at the end of the show. Uh, our guest is an author, a speaker, filmmaker, a uh, famous political uh, commentator, and lecturer. Uh, he is one of the world's foremost experts on anti-communism and anti-socialism. Uh, he's written four books, uh, been the part of three films, and the host of Counterpunch on the Epic Times. Uh, he travels all over the world speaking at numerous engagements, conferences, and lectures to promote Christianity, free markets, and limited government. Uh, please welcome my guest at this time, uh, Mr. Trevor Loudon. Uh, Trevor Loudon, welcome to Gifts for Glory. How are you? Hey, uh, thanks. I'm great. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. We're uh, excited to have you and uh, just talk about the uh, the many different projects that you're a part of. Um, so uh, first, uh, we, we have something uh, in common in a way that uh, you were a part of. Well, we're not really in common, but uh, a common thread is that I had Kerry Gordon uh, on a, a little bit over a year ago here on the show. And you and he worked together on a film called Enemies Within the Church. Uh, so since you know that's something that's been a part of the show before, uh, tell us, uh, just remind our, my audience a little bit about enemy, Enemies Within the Church and, and your role in that film. Well, look, I, I was brought into that. Um, where Judd Saul and I did a movie in 2016 called Enemies Within, which was about the Marxist and Islamist infiltration of the U.S. Congress and Senate. Mm. And we're really seeing that today. But anyway, so... Um, Judd was very concerned about the wokeness that was coming into his church in Iowa. So he brought me and he said, Trevor, we've got to start investigating the Marxism in the churches. And so I already knew there was a lot of it had penetrated the Catholic church and the mainstream Protestant denominations. And we did a history of that. We looked at the, the, the Communist Party involvement, the infiltration of the churches in the 20s, you know, the, the very first Communist Party front in America was the Methodist Federation for Social Action. Mm -hmm. But what we really delved into is how they're now moving into the evangelical churches, even the Southern Baptists. The so-called woke movement, the woke church, is a Marxist church. Wokeism is just a new name for Marxism. And Marxism is essentially atheistic, essentially satanic, in my opinion, and has no place in any Christian church whatsoever. But millions of young people go to church every Sunday. Um, they think, I need some spiritual foundation. I better go to church. And they don't hear anything about the Old Testament or the Ten Commandments or, or uh, any of the tough stuff in the Bible. They hear a lot about their white privilege and their 
their oppression, you know, the oppression, the uh, social oppression around them and ending global warming and stuff like this, all Marxist talking points, and they think that's the gospel. Yeah, They don't know any different. So we did the movie because we are losing the churches in this country. We are The churches are going woke. The seminaries are going woke. The Bible colleges are going woke. They're as bad as the secular universities now, most of them. And we lose the churches, we lose America. And we lose America, we lose the world. It's, the, it's that serious. We are the, uh, for all of our faults, America is the last superpower that can intervene when evil marches, especially against Israel. When, yes. When America goes, Israel is a sitting duck as far as the world is considered because we're the one big kid on the block that will defend them. Everybody else will either look the other way or join in on the attack. Well, we've seen, you know, under President Trump, and I'm not trying to get too political here, but right. the, the the bad guys of the world were pretty scared of him. Mm -hmm. they thought, What's he going to do? You know, they didn't know. We have a new president who's seen as much weaker. Now we've got a war in Ukraine. We've got ready for a war in the Middle East. We get ready for a war in the Far East. And we've got open borders that are causing massive chaos. You know, all of this is deliberate. All of this is a result of a weak America, an America that seems weak on the world stage. So if we want to save millions of lives, we want to stop World War Three and chaos and losing a country, we better start saving this one. We Absolutely. better start sorting this one out. So you've been on this, you know, you've been on the front fighting against uh, communism and socialism for quite a while and, and Marxism as well. Um, so you've written four books. Uh, tell us a, a little bit about uh, about the books and and what they're uh, what they cover. Well, the first one was a, a seven hundred pages called Barack Obama and the Enemies Within, and I deal I know a lot about Chicago politics. So I dealt with a lot. I, I, I studied Obama's Marxist ties in Chicago, starting in two thousand and seven when he was mm. just a blip on the radar. And um, so 700 pages on his ties. Glenn Beck used a lot of my work in his chalkboards. Mm. Um, a lot of other authors have used my foundational work. I exposed Van Jones, the communist green job czar, who Glenn Beck got kicked out of the White House. Then I did one on the Marxists uh, called um, Enemies Within Communist Socialists and Progressives in the U.S. Congress. Um, and then... Last year, I did one called White House Reds, exposing of the 11 Democrats running for the presidency in 2020, 10 of them, including Biden, had Marxist backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So I exposed that deep Marxist backgrounds. You know, even nice Amy Klobuchar from Minnesota, you know, even crybaby Cory Booker from New Jersey, mm -hmm. or a little uh, cute little Pete Buttigieg from Indiana. You know, which has now Secretary of Transportation and wants to tax you for every mile you drive, but can't keep the diesel stores, you can't keep the diesel stocked up. In deep, deep Marxist. And my latest project um, was just released two books, 400 pages each, um, Security Risk Senators. And I profile 30 currently serving senators, including your dear Dick Durbin from Chicago who have deep Marxist ties, who are working with China, who are working with Iran, working with the Communist Party to destroy the Constitution, destroy Christianity, and destroy America. And I'll just make a very simple argument. If you were Xi Jinping, the leader of China, and you wanted to bring America down, would you want to get into a billion-dollar shooting war, a billion-dollar trade war which might blow up in your face, would you want to get into a trillion dollar shooting war before you are ready? Or would you rather spend a few hundred million dollars buying up American politicians to do your dirty work for you? Mm -hmm. What do you think would be a better investment? The better investment is in the people because they're easier to control with a little bit that, of money. That's right. And there's no background checks. There's no security clearances or background checks in Congress or the Senate. None whatsoever. You need a background check to work in the Department of Defense, but not to be the chairman of the Armed Services Committee in the House or the Senate. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you need to be checked out to work in intelligence, but you don't need to have one to be the chairman of the intelligence committee. And our enemies know that, and they're using that. Well, the uh, the Chicago stock market is owned by a Chinese com- corporation. Mm. And so it, it's clear that there's a plan in place, and whether or not we want to ad- admit it or, or, or even acknowledge it. Uh, we have a uh, senator that's still high ranking uh, that uh, had an affair with a Chinese spy for many years. Well, that's that's right. Um, Eric Swal er, <clears throat> Eric Swalwell had an affair with a Chinese spy. I'm just writing an article about him now. And uh, Diane Feinstein, who was chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, had a Chinese spy in her office for twenty years. And when he was discovered, she said he was just my driver. He was her office manager. He was getting Defense Department documents across his desk. She lied, but Mm -hmm. there were no consequences, none whatsoever. You know, Ratcliffe, who is Trump's intelligence advisor, said the Chinese now control so many American congressmen, they can determine which legislation passes a Congress and which doesn't. They should conserve anybody. We are now being run by Barack Obama and Susan Rice and Valerie Jarrett, and Xi Jinping. That's who's running America right now. And we've got 30 senators exposed in my books who are cooperating in that effort. Absolutely. And it is scary, but it also, for those of us that believe the Bible, we know that there will be a one world government, a one world church at the end before before everything goes down in the final chapters of Revelation. So we know in in almost like this cynical way as Christians who believe in Christ, we we can look and think like and get excited. It's like, okay, all this that we believe is real because it's happening right now. So, but at the same time, we're also very sad because there's a lot of people who are not gonna be who are not gonna get on board and will miss that train. Well, see, this is the argument I have with some people. Like I heard of a pastor the other day said. Somebody said, look, we need to get out and get involved in politics. We need to get involved in the election, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, you know, I'm torn, he said, because the worse things get, that means it's closer to Jesus coming back. So should I encourage? So should I, should I fight back? And this is a very false argument. You know, like people say, well, it's God's will that these things are happening. Well, if your three-year-old granddaughter falls in the swimming pool, do you say, well, that's God's will, I'll let her drown, or do you jump in and save her? You jump you in know? and try to save, absolutely. Absolutely. And if your country, if you, your country, which is, which is founded on the first country in the world that is founded on the principle that man's rights come from God, not the government, that has a constitution directly inspired out of the Bible, that has done more to set people free, more to spread the gospel, more to save people from tyranny, more to drag people out of poverty than any other nation in the world. If that nation is collapsing because largely because Christians have abandoned their civic responsibilities, that's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are told to occupy till he comes. We, we have civic responsibilities we are supposed to restrain evil to the last moment. You know, yeah. you, you, you don't you don't stop paying your mortgage because the world's you know you you know you think the rapture's imminent. You don't stop paying your staff. You don't stop mowing your lawn. You don't stop changing your underwear. Mm-hmm. We we are to fight to the very last moment, and none of us know when that moment is. Right. Jesus didn't know when that moment's going to be. So yeah. how are we meant to? You know? So I, I get really angry if people say, oh, well, it's God's will. You know, I, I saw Christianity obliterated in Iraq in the last couple of years by ISIS. They killed hundreds of thousands of Christians. I didn't see any of them get raptured. Mm-hmm. I didn't see American Christians lift a hand to save them. They were slaughtered. The whole Christianity was virtually wiped out of the northern half of that country. Mm, yeah. You know, so so in my friend Judd Saul, who did is doing the movie Enemies Within, he's he goes to Nigeria three times a year 
to help Nigerian Christians set up self-defense units to ward off the Muslim marauders who are slaughtering and killing and burning and torturing and wiping out Christian villages. You know, that's, that's, I admire, I admire that. You mm -hmm. fight, you fight, you fight. We go, our duty is to restrain evil. Yeah. Not to succumb to it, not to turn a blind eye to it. Yeah. And, and as you said, it, we're to fight to the end. There are a lot who are getting to that place where they think, oh, well, Christ has a victory. So we're at the final two minutes of the football game. Let's kneel out the clock. And that's not what we're called to do. There are people who need to hear the truth so that they can be on that, that final victory lap with us. That's right. Look, look here's the thing. If the, if, the, if the chief duty of a Christian is to spread the gospel, isn't the second duty to preserve the freedom to be able to do the, to do the first duty? Mm -hmm. You know, to spread that you, you're supposed to get everybody you can saved well to do that we must maintain freedom for as long as as possible that's our duty yeah you know not not allow tyranny to take over seriously they are planning to make the bible a hate document in this country yeah that they've just passed a law saying that lgbtq rights it's gone through the Senate, and it may go through the House, that LGBT, that churches who won't support gay marriage are going to lose their tax-free status. You know, these are the, the this is the beginning of the persecution of the churches. And yeah. if you think that's going to be fun, um, you, you haven't lived in a, a country where churches are truly persecuted, and that's coming here. And, and the thing that a lot don't understand, especially outside the church, is... When they think of church, they think these are these giant Roman Catholic churches with 10,000 members or like the Willow Creeks or or Joel Osteen's church. They don't realize that about 95 percent of churches are 150 people or less. And without the tax free status, they start paying property tax. They start paying tax on this that, and the other thing. They will go bankrupt yeah. because the, the American church by and large, is the local family church where everybody knows everybody. Everybody goes to everybody's funerals and birthdays and weddings. And they need that tax-exempt status so that they can afford the property that they're sitting on, so that they can do the community outreach that they do. And uh, taking away tax-exempt status, the big churches, they'll be all right. It's the, the multitude of mom and dad churches that will go under and without them in the communities, all these social services that they do, ministering to single moms, ministering to the homeless, things like that, all that goes away too as an organized, Absolutely. You know, organized thing. So the, as you said, this is an organized plan of evil encroaching on the church. And I don't know, you know I'm based on our conversation, I can pick up, maybe we kind of see eye to eye on this, but I think that COVID was a dress rehearsal to see mm. Which mm. churches are going to comply and which ones are going to be risking facing that persecution? <laughs> and and sadly, it wasn't a lot that stood up, was it? Right. You know, where does it say in the Constitution that an emergency decreed by the government justifies destroying your destroying your First Amendment rights, your rights to 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 speak and and attend church and and proselytize and whatever? Where does it say that? Most churches just folded, just completely folded. And many of those churches are not coming back. Right. But what is good is a lot of the small churches that did stand up are now growing. You know, the smaller home. And you're right. The, the, America, the, 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 the little churches are the best. You know, like America was built by mom and pop businesses. As we have got more of a corporate state, our, our businesses got more corrupt. The bigger things get, the more corrupt they tend to be. Mm -hmm. So we, so I'm very gratified to see the growth of the home churches, the small churches, people leaving the big denominations and being independent, um, because the 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 globalists, the government, the communists want all Christians grouped into a very few churches, like in China, that are essentially state churches that do what the government tells them. That's a way to pacify people, to make them think that they're, they're actually worshipping when they're actually just 
being tools of the government. Yeah. And and we got to, Christians got to stand up because they really, I think a lot of them really don't see what's coming here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my church is a great example. Uh, I go to a church that was a church plant in 2016. We don't have our own building. We were meeting in a school when the pandemic hit. And because schools are government, schools had to, you know, they were shut down. So we were without a place. But in the last two and a half years, we've been to almost a dozen different locations. But we continue to grow because our pastor, not in a cavalier way, but in a boldness before the Lord way, said, we're still going to meet. We're still going to be the church. Come as you're comfortable, if you're comfortable, or stay home and watch online. But we're still going to push forward. And our mm. church has grown in the last two and a half years, where many who took the time off have not recovered from it, like you said. Well, we, you know, when when you need spiritual comfort the most, when you're stressed, when your family is not, when you're economically stressed, when you when you're lost. Yeah, that's when you need that that church the most, and it's not there. Mm-hmm. It closes down. How does that make you feel? You right. Know? But the church that stays open, this church that rich, risks fines. So I, I've spoken to a church out in San Jose. They've got something like a million and a half dollars worth of fines that mm-hmm. they're now fighting. But they stayed open, and they've grown, and they've they've nurtured people, whereas other churches have just fallen away, and so they should. Yeah. You know, what 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 are the what what are the first people who get cast into hell? You know, there's a list at the end of the book of, in the book of Revelations. The first people that go to hell are the cowards. Mm. Not the murderers, not the idolaters, the cowards. What does that what does that tell you? Yeah. Uh one of my one of the guys I like to watch on, online, Vadi Bacham, uh mm-hmm. he once said a uh, quote where it's, um the easiest way to avoid persecution is compromise. Yeah. Yeah. And you compromise your faith, compromise your beliefs, say, well, you know, it's just this or it's just this one time. And then just this one time becomes, well, it's just two times. Well, it's just three times. And uh, God didn't really give us that out in any point in the Bible. Now, you live in Florida. I live in Chicago. You have extreme weather as far as hurricanes. We have winter weather. There's wisdom in those definitive emergencies. Say, okay, let's close the church down because the hurricane's coming. Let's close our church. But that's the church making the decision or the state of emergency because of an imminent threat, not yeah. this indefinite, let's move the goalpost every week type thing. Well, so there is a difference look, in those types of wisdoms. Well, uh, uh, that's right. You know, an individual church should have the right to choose. And, and, and common sense dictates that. Mm-hmm. But we saw it in California. All the churches were closed, but the strip clubs were open. Right. You know, it was very clear this was an anti-Christian agenda. And the, 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 the government was using this to enforce their prejudices. Mm-hmm. If anybody is unclear that the um, you know the left in this country doesn't like Christianity, they just had to keep their eyes and ears open for the last couple of years, and it should have been made pretty darn apparent. And the legislation that is coming down the pike that will that will force Christians to compromise or close that will that's going to be a real test. But I'm not seeing any great protest about this. Right. You know, and the voices that are out there sometimes are marginalized, like, oh, they're, they're just crazy. They're they're looking for a demon under, under every rock. But I would almost rather look for the demon under every rock than be just completely complacent and aloof about the evil that's encroaching. Aren't, aren't we told to be discerning, to be wise yeah. as serpents? You know, we're supposed to be crafty. We're supposed to be we're supposed to see, you know, a pastor has a crook. And that's supposed to, like a shepherd, you know, his analogy is a shepherd. A shepherd has a crook. And that's to discipline the sheep and to beat away the wolves. Yeah. You know, the job of a pastor is to warn of enemies and to guide the people to freedom and safety. How many pastors do you think really under, really take on that role these days? Right. Well, we don't want to step on toes. We don't want to chase away the the seeker. We want to make sure everyone feels welcome and safe. And 
at no point did in gospel in the gospels was Jesus in that mindset. It was about you know love and truth. And but when did Jesus back- ever compromise his message? Exactly. To when did, when did he ever soften the message to make it more palatable? Never. So why is it okay for pastors to do that? Because we've lost our uh, our way. We've lost our um, moral compass. We're worried about numbers and the impact. Uh, what we'll you know say we'll have on uh, on tithes and offerings, instead of worried about what the ultimate word will be from the Lord. Will He say, "Get away! I never knew you," or will He say, "Well done, good and faithful servant"? Exactly, exactly. And that that's you know when when you when you make your uh, pastoral decisions on the bottom line of your church, of if you look at the bo- the, the uh, balance sheet before you do you write your sermon, um, it's that's got to be wrong, isn't it? You know, yeah. because because look look, and Chris Jesus wasn't seeker friendly, right? You know, he he was very tough, and he knew that not everybody would accept. That not everybody would be willing to to look at what he said. He knew that from the outside. He could have got lots more converts had he changed his message a bit and performed a few miracles and put on a few shows, you know, and and uh, collaborated with the authorities and you know, you know, sucked up to Caesar a little bit more. I'm sure he could have had a great ministry going, but. Would it have survived them? Would you, would you still have Christianity today? We wouldn't have the forgiveness of sins because he never would have stepped on enough toes to be put up to be uh, crucified. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so that you know, that's just the uh, the inf- that's the truth is he had to step on toes and make people uncomfortable enough that they wanted him gone so that he wouldn't challenge their power, their prestige, uh, in their position. Um, so I know that we have a hard stop in a couple of moments and I want to uh, honor your time. Um, so like I said at the top, this is going to be a different looking episode. Uh, but you know, uh, real quickly kind of, um, you know, you were part of the original, uh, enemies within the church. Um, and there are plans for a uh, follow-up. Uh, can you tell a little bit about the follow-up? Yeah, well, we're, we're, it's still in its early stages. We're still fundraising and looking at that. But, but look, we can see, as you said, the move towards sort of a global church, a big, you know, a big unified church bringing in lots of denominations and maybe a bit of new age stuff. You know, we're looking at a big global church. You've already seen Pope, the Pope sort of working, you know, with Islam on this kind of thing. And so we want to, we want to warn people away from this. You know, that this is not, mm-hmm. this, this is not, Christian, this is satanic that we're we're looking at here, yeah. and when Christians are being softened up, they're being dumbed down and softened up, so that if they don't know their doctrine, if they don't know their real foundational beliefs, they will be seduced, or at least some of them will be seduced by this. And yeah. so, so, um, but you know, because so many people who want a spiritual foundation don't have one, or go to churches that are very, very weak. Um, people can be seduced into this kind of stuff. And so we want to put a stake in the ground, as we did with the first movie. But this will, this was more focusing on what's happening in the American church. This will be a bit more on the global church, you know, what's yeah. happening around the world, because this isn't just an American problem. And, and, and we're seeing um, globalization in government. We're seeing globalization in economics. We're seeing all of this big central and and big tech. It's all getting more centralized. And that's what's happening to faith as well. Well, that's the plan for religion. They want a one world religion. And if we if we have that, we're done. And we we want to expose that, how, how it works and with the globalists and, you know, organizations like the World Economic Forum and that kind of thing. Um, Christianity survived for 2000 years. And it's kept people, you know, it, it's it's done its job for 2,000 years. But the devil has always been trying to destroy it. 
yeah. and now that it's weakened so many Christians foundations that now they're ready for the big for the big push for the big yeah. uh, for, for the big deception that's coming around the corner. Absolutely. Now in the uh, last uh, 30 seconds or so uh, before uh, I let you go, uh, we didn't even t- talk about your show on the Epic Times. Tell us about Counterpunch. Uh, kind of yeah. give us the elevator pitch on that. Uh, Epoch, t- Epoch Time, Epoch TV, Epoch Times newspaper, which a lot of people are reading these days. I, I do a weekly show called Counterpunch, where the boxing glove, not on the show, but that's the logo of the thing. And it's exposing a lot about uh, what's happening in the, in the in the political scene in America, around the world. That I basically say it's about countering the unfolding world communist revolution because mm-hmm. that's what we're in America. We're in a communist revolution now, but probably 1% of the country realizes that. We're in a world communist revolution. That's why we're seeing what's happening in Ukraine, why we're seeing China threatening the Pacific. Communism's taken over most of Latin America now. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to educate people so we can push back, you know, because I, I, I just, I'm not going to surrender. i got kids. You know, yeah. you, you can't let them take your kids' freedom. Now, how can Absolutely. any parent stand back and let that happen? Right. Well, uh, author, uh, movie uh, um, producer, um, and uh, the host of Counterpunch on the Epic Times, uh, uh, Trevor Loudon, thank you so much for being on. Uh, I've got your uh, links in our show notes, and uh, wish you all the best, and uh, God bless you and all your work. Well, thank you very much. It was great talking to you, Dave. I um, hope we can do it again and get more to some of the subjects that we missed tonight. So, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to do it. But yeah. Take care, and we will uh, talk to you soon. Uh, visit uh, our guest at uh, trevorloudon.com or on Facebook at, at Trevor Loudon. And as we end uh, uh, our conversation, I want to uh, replay the trailer for uh, Enemies Within the Church. I think it will uh, challenge you wherever you are in your walk and wherever your church is at. So check out this trailer and I'll be back with devotions with Dave and we'll wrap up the show after this. Thank you. What happened to the church, to the living, powerful, transformative, nation-shaking Christianity? What they're trying to do is completely demolish Western civilization and then to rebuild it in a just society. How do you break down American Christianity? I think the problem today in our culture is many of our words have been co-opted and stolen and dumbed down and reversed. Social justice is sold as something that it isn't. Critical race theory is sold as something that it isn't. Whiteness has caused blindness of heart. Whiteness has caused blindness of heart. When you preach victimization, it always leads to vengeance and vice. Us against them, me against you, I want my pound of flesh. American churches today are where universities were 10 years ago. Pretty heavily Marxist. They're not quite there yet, but they're well on the way. Many of the seminaries and Bible colleges are definitely already there. That message that they're going out and taking the world is not you need to repent of your sin, receive Christ. Instead, the message that you actually have is they are under the weight of racism or sexism or homophobia, and then we need to unify them together. I'm gay. I'm 29. I'm a youth pastor in New Jersey. I'm straight, and I'm also a youth pastor in New Jersey. We're planning on sharing life together for the rest of our lives, which we're not totally sure what that looks like. Obviously, Nick is straight, and he does plan on getting married. Uh, When he has a wife one day, she'll make those decisions with us. The future damage of what we're doing now is just going to be enormous. The entire fabric of family, personal wealth, private property, all those things are out the door. And everything is the state. They believe the state is God. They don't define justice the same way as the scripture. Oh, no. It's going to be an equality, all right. And it's going to be a totalitarian Marxist justice.
Are you looking for entertainment for a fundraiser, outreach, youth night, date night, or for a conference? Does your team need a way to improve team camaraderie, confidence, and communication? Well, look at Wellverse Comedy for a show, performance, or a workshop. Wellverse Comedy is Chicago's clean comedy team, and we're ready to serve you, your audience, or your organization. We've headlined our own shows at the Second City at Gettys Comedy Club in Indianapolis and started our own TV show called His Line. And we've raised over $5,000 for charity in just the last two years years. We are now booking for your back-to-school bash, fundraiser, and even your holiday parties. Contact us today and let's see how a night of high-energy, clean, original, family-friendly comedy can make your next event memorable for all the right reasons. Connect with us on social media at WellversedCMDY. That's at WellversedCMDY or online at WellversedComedy.com. WellversedComedy.com. For booking information, email us improv at WellversedComedy.com. And welcome back uh, to uh, Gifts for Glory. Uh, different uh, order to our show. Uh, we only had a half hour with our guest. Um, really some important work that he's doing with um, the Epic Times with Counterpunch and uh, his books, uh, Combating Marxism, Communism, and Socialism, and, and their impact in the in the church, uh, both here in America and around the world, uh, because the enemy is encroaching. And I think that we need to be, as a church, on guard and ready to to go to spiritual war against these ideals that are distracting and are in complete opposition to the gospel. Uh, so I really thought it was important to uh, to use our time, talk about some of the things that he's a part of. Uh, please uh, connect with our guest. Uh, you can find him on Facebook. He's at Trevor Loudon, uh, at Trevor Loudon, or you can find him at his website, uh, trevorloudon.com. As he mentioned, uh, they are uh, in the beginning stages of doing another uh, enemies within the church uh, film, and not just focusing this time on just the American church, but the church around the world. Uh, so uh, important work, and we just need to be ready because, you know, Christ warned us uh, in the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, all throughout prophecy, you, you see that things are not going to be all sunshine and rainbows when we get to those end times. Uh, whether you're pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, uh, rapture, rapture at all, no matter where you are doctrinally, the fact is things are going to get rough, and we need to not kneel out the clock and and get ready for, for the rapture or for the end by just kneeling. Uh, kneel in prayer, absolutely, but also continue the fight. The harvest fields are ripe, and we need more workers. Be the workers and continue to pray for workers because there are a lot of people that need to hear the gospel so that they have that chance to be in that number when uh, when the saints go marching in, if you will. Um, so again, trevorloudon.com is his website or Facebook at Trevor Loudon. Uh, also uh, find him on uh, the Epic Times. Uh, look for Counterpunch. Uh, the website is in our uh, show notes, also on the screen right now for those who are watching. Uh, the Epic Times slash C dash Counterpunch uh, with Trevor Loudon, a weekly show there. And uh, from what I understand, it's actually free to watch. Just register with your email so you can keep in touch. And then let you know when new episodes are coming out. So that's at theepictimes.com slash C dash counterpunch uh, to uh, check out the show. And now uh, let's get uh, back to our devotional with Dave segment for tonight. Uh, again, a little bit out of order. So uh, for those that are joining us late, yeah, um, I apologize for any confusion. But uh, this past Sunday, I was blessed with the opportunity to, to give the message at my church. And we're talking about Advent. Uh, Advent is the uh, the arrival of a noteworthy event or person. And uh, the Advent we're celebrating is the arrival of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Messiah, uh, the, uh, the prophesied anointed one. And um, so I taught from Isaiah 9 as well as other parts of Scripture. But I, I wanted to share this as our Devotions with Dave segment, Isaiah 9, 6 out of the NLT. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So Jesus has come. He came as a baby, not as the triumphant military general that many were hoping that would overthrow Rome. Uh, he came to overthrow uh, the oppression of sin and death, which is far greater in power and far greater in destruction than uh, even Rome could be. So 
as we celebrate Advent, as we get into the Christmas season, uh, just remember that a child is born to us and given to us. Now, a very interesting thing, I was at a youth retreat uh, a couple of weeks ago, and one of the speakers talked about Prince of Peace, a nickname uh, of Jesus here in Isaiah. And a lot of us want the peace, but we don't want to come under the authority of the prince. We want the Prince of Peace to give us a peace, but not be our prince. It doesn't work that way. We need to see Jesus as our prince, as our king of kings, as a lord of lords. We need to come under his authority and respect him as lord before we expect him to give us peace. Uh, so he is the prince of peace, but he must also be our prince so that we can experience that peace. And I thought that was a really uh, interesting point and a, a new way to look at that. But as we celebrate this Christmas season, uh, the cliche is, you know, you know, celebrate the reason for the season, who is Jesus. And for those of you that maybe don't have the hope that is in Jesus, uh, hope is both a verb and a noun. Uh, we have hope. We we hope for things. But our hope is also in a person, and that's in that baby Jesus that was born on in Christmas season. Uh, whether or not that's accurate to our calendars doesn't matter. We're honoring it. We're remembering it. Um, and that's what we're celebrating Christmas for is because Jesus came. He came to show us the way to live the way and to live in a perfect way so that he could be the ultimate lamb of God, the sacrifice to take away the sins of man. And that's the hope we have. And if you don't have that hope, this is the perfect season to do it. Don't wait until Christmas Day. Don't wait until New Year's Eve and then New Year, New Me type stuff. Do it now. Find that hope in Jesus. Commit your life to him. Follow him. Learn from him. And give your life to him, whether it's a, the living sacrifice of how you live or as, as Trevor and I talked, things are going to get ugly. Don't compromise. You may be called like the, the apostles, but there's great honor in that. And Jesus said, those that will lose your life for me will find it. So I encourage you to be to find those steps, to find that hope, and follow Jesus all the way to the gates of heaven. No matter what road that may be, no matter what that may look like, let your hope be in him, not only in Christmas season, but throughout the year. Because as Trevor and I were talking, things are going to get ugly. Uh, Revelation was not a fairy tale. Uh, so I encourage you to find that hope, and especially men, any men that are listening or watching, you are the head of your household. 73% of people, 73% of families are saved because the, the man of the house was first saved. So set your family up for success in God's kingdom. Commit to Christ. Find your hope in him. And uh, let that hope be your strength to carry you through the dark times that are ahead. Uh, not to be scary or doom and gloom, but the Bible is true, and we got to be prepared. Let's keep our uh, our oil uh, filled, our our wicks at great at, at the right length, and our our lamps lit, so we're ready for when the bridegroom comes. So that is our, our devotion with Dave Simon to wrap up. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us here on Gifts for Glory Ministries. Uh, next week we will have a another guest. Uh, we will be uh, bringing in. Um, let me get his name. <laughs> uh, I was not prepared to wrap up the show. I apologize. Um, so our guest next week is going to be um, uh, Seth. Uh, he is a um, uh, he's a speaker. He's a TV show host. He's a political activist. And I think uh, uh, next next week you're going to be uh, really uh, interested to see what he has to say um, about. Uh, you know, about the, the current state of affairs. Uh, I think you'll uh, really enjoy next week. So I hope you will join us next Monday night uh, here on Gifts of Glory. Uh, and uh, as we wrap up, if your church is looking for an outreach, a way to bring more people back to the church, maybe your numbers have kind of suffered because of, um, you know, COVID and the closures and people being, you know, a little bit timid about coming back, uh, you know, consider Well-Versed Comedy for a comedy night. We would love to come out do an outreach, do a fundraiser. Uh, we've had a lot of success doing fundraisers. We've raised over $5,000 for uh, for RFK, Royal Family Kids Camps, uh, in the last two years. And we recently did a fundraiser to help support uh, one of our members' church, raised over uh, uh, $400 for their church. 
Uh, so uh, please reach out if you're looking for an event for your church. We also do uh, improv classes that can uh, help uh, you know break through some of the uh, the hangups with ministry. So uh, reach out to me directly, davidgistriglory.com, or visit us at wellversecomedy.com, wellversecomedy.com, uh, to get the conversation started. All right. Well, thanks so much again for joining us. Uh, we're going to have a, a great week, and we'll see you next week here. Uh, it's going to be 7.30 p.m. Central Time, live on our Facebook page, on our YouTube page, and then the replay is available on um, the Creative Motion Network, the Taken TV Podcast Network, and also the podcast available on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Have a great rest of your evening, and we will talk to you next week. Mm-hmm.